Sir, my obvious question is, there are diplomatic tensions between Canada and India that is ongoing because of Trudeau's allegation which India has obviously rejected. Uh, what will you say on that and on India's response since we know that Sri Lanka has to suffer from various forms of terrorism in the last decade? Yeah, we have always suffered and some of the terrorists have found uh, safe haven in Canada. Canadian Prime Minister has this uh, way of just uh, coming out with some outrageous allegations without any supporting proof. The same thing they did for Sri Lanka, uh, a terrible uh, total lie about saying that Sri Lanka had a, a genocide. Everybody knows there was no genocide in this in, in, uh, in our country and we have, uh, we have dealt it in the past. Uh, we have uh, categorically rejected those outrageous allegations. So uh, I'm not surprised that sometime uh, Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau comes out with uh, outrageous, unsubstantiated uh, allegations. Uh, so, since you mentioned about his comment on the genocide, uh, we know Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka was summoned. Uh, how do you think that that statement has affected the relationship between Sri Lanka and Canada and uh, if we can talk about the wider Indo-Pacific? Yeah, that has uh, actually affected our relationship. People to people, we have good con contact. Foreign Ministry has a different take on that. Global Affairs has very clearly said that Sri Lanka doesn't, did not go through a genocide. Whereas the Prime Minister, as a politician, stand up and says that genocide had taken place. That itself is contradictory to each other. That doesn't help. You know, I don't think anyone should <laughs> poke into their nose into the other countries and tell as to how we should govern our country. We we love our country more than anyone else. That's why we are in our country. So therefore, uh, we are not uh, very happy about that relation, uh, that statement at all. We have to look after our region. We need to work together. Uh, that's how we can create a peaceful environment there. And we should not be dictated by anyone else as to how we should conduct our affairs. Foreign media had given much publicity to the statement made by the Sri Lankan Minister of Foreign Affairs today. Indian media gave wide coverage to this statement that was made. Speaking on the arrival of a Chinese research vessel in Sri Lanka, Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri said that Sri Lanka has not yet given permission to the Chinese research vessel Xi'an 6 to dock in the country's ports. Uh, so there are reports of Chinese research vessel is scheduled to be docked in Sri Lanka in October named as Xi Yan 6. Uh, if you can tell us something about that since we know that India in the past has raised concern because of its security and how does Sri Lanka assures New Delhi that its security interest in the Indian Ocean will be. But we have now come out with the SOP standard operate procedure. When we were making that, we consulted uh, many of our friends, including India. So as long as that comply with the SOP, we have no problem. But if it doesn't comply with the SOP, we have a problem. We have not given the permission to come to Sri Lanka during the month of October. So there are negotiations going on. But Indian security concerns, which are legitimate, are very, very important for us. We have always told that because we want to keep our region as a zone of peace. However, the Chinese research vessel Xi'an 6 entered the Indian Ocean region on the 19th of September. In addition to that ship, the Yuan-15 Chinese vessel is already in the Indian Ocean region. These two vessels are reported to be engaged in an operation in the exclusive economic zone of India. On the 18th of September, news reports quoted the Sri Lanka Navy saying that the Chinese research vessel Xi'an 6 would arrive in Sri Lanka on the 25th of October. It was also announced that the Ministry of Defence has given its approval in this regard as well. The Sri Lanka Navy said that from the 25th of October, the Chinese research vessel was scheduled to stay in the Sea of Sri Lanka for 17 days for maritime exploration in conjunction with Sri Lanka's Nara Institute. However, according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, this has not yet been approved. The Minister of Foreign Affairs made a controversial statement about the Chinese research ship and about Canada in the backdrop where the President is repeatedly declaring that he follows a neutral foreign policy for Sri Lanka. During the last visit to New York, President Ranil Vikramasinghe also expressed his views on Sri Lanka's neutral foreign policy. Economic, social, ecological. We are prepared to work with uh, any actor, state or non-state actors who will help us to achieve these objectives. So we are working with the West on one side and we are working with China on the other. So this is basically Sri Lanka 
and others, uh, the South Pacific Islands, are all in the same boat. Why we are getting pulled into it, it's difficult for us to understand. Of course, we are crucial. In fact, South Pacific and Indian Ocean are crucial strategically. So we are strategic. But just because we are strategic, it doesn't mean that we are involved in any military alliances with China or anyone else. So it's in this background that we have to look at the geopolitics of our own islands. When the policy of the head of state is such, doesn't the foreign minister's statement on China and Canada raise concerns regarding the foreign policy of Sri Lanka?